Hi, I'm Dan Herbert, course developer and instructor at Point Blank Music School. And in the final part of this three-part series, we're going to focus on adding some additional features to our sampler. We cover many elements of sampling and sound design in our courses in London, Los Angeles and online. To find out more, head over to www.pointblanklondon.com. So I've tidied up the patch slightly and at the end of the previous video we were just adding a root note parameter which allowed us to change the playback of the sample. So I want to add a detune control. To do this I'm going to create a new object and I'm going to call it live.dial and we want to be able to change the tuning down by 0.5 and up by 0.5. So let's get the inspector and down to range, minus 0.5, space 0.5. And unit style, we could just choose a float. And initial enable, we want that on zero. So that's done. And then we need to patch it in. So here, I'm just going to delete that cable, create another new object. So we want to add this on. And it's important to add an argument with a float in it or a decimal place. I'm going to need a little bit more room here. Now, what's important to realize within when programming within Max or Max for Live is when we've created an object like this and connecting a value into its right inlet, it won't actually trigger the sum. Okay, so it won't actually do anything till a number comes into the left inlet. And in this type of patch, that might be significant because you might want to be playing the sample and detuning. So what we need to do is add an additional object on. And there's a couple of different ways to do this, but I'm just going to create an object called TBF. Trigger, bang, float. And then connect it up like this. So float is the number. That will come into the right inlet and it will then bang the left inlet and trigger the actual sum. It's just a technique you have to use to make sure things happen in the right order. Also want to name this live dial. So rather than calling it live dial, let's call it detune. And we've got long and short name, just name both of them. And that's now called detune. You can see it defaults to zero. If I play a note on my keyboard, hear that now working you can see how it's affecting this value down here as I adjust that parameter and that's pretty much now a functional yet simple monophonic sampler so what we're going to do now is develop its looping capabilities and look at kind of triggering different parts of the file now this involves a little bit of maths but it's actually not too bad at all so what I want to do first is to work out how long a beat is and to do that, I need to find out how long the actual file is. So I'm just going to copy this object down, the buffer tilde. And instead of buffer, I'm going to type in info tilde space sound one. OK, now when you load sound, it will bang out of here. OK, and I'll connect into there and then it will actually tell us if we connect into this third outlet here, how long the actual sample is. So how this works, it's based on the principle that we've got a perfectly edited sample of a bar long. And we're going to divide it up into 16. So if that loop's going at, say, 120 BPM, then using a bit of maths, then we can work out that quarter note's 500 milliseconds. Now we're going to get Max to do all the maths for us, so we can see these individual slices at 16th notes are 125 milliseconds each. So here is the total length. If I divide that by... 16 i'm going to add a decimal point that will give us the length of a 16th note okay we don't have to worry about tempo or anything like that for what we're doing here now the interesting thing about groove is we've been playing from zero milliseconds on the sample which is the beginning of the sample now actually we can type in any value into this or we can set it up so we can control whereabouts the sample starts playing. So how this is going to work is I'm just going to delete part of this patch. So I'm actually going to delete the detune part. And put the sig part. So that's going to be the playback speed. So that's just going to be set to one default speed. And what we're getting out of here is the pitch minus 60. Let me just add in the K slider again so you can see what pitches I'm playing here. So if I play C3, then it's zero. 
C sharp, one, two, three, four. So we're going to use this to call up each of those slices. So the numbers zero, one, two, three don't really mean a lot at the moment, but what we want to do is to get a sixteenth and multiply that by this value over here. So N for multiply. Connect that through there. And if I hold down the shift key and then draw this cable in, then it automatically segments this cable of let go shift and then I can just connect it up like that. And we can now see what the value will be and that will go straight in to the groove object. Now I'll need to drop in the audio file again because I connected this all up after I've added the audio file, but now drop that in. You can see that says 2,662. Uh, if I add a little float here, then we'll be able to see that a 16th is 166.38 milliseconds long. Okay, so now when I play the keyboard, zero is still gonna be zero, one, it's 166, two is 332, etc. Okay, and you can hear it's triggering different slices. There's a snare on that hit, obviously kick on that one, kind of clap. Okay, so it's automatically key groups. So if I play a chromatic scale, and then go backwards, you're playing the actual slices in the reverse order. So what we're gonna do now is change things around a bit and make use of this middle inlet here and this third inlet here. Now this controls the loop point of the groove object. So up to now we've just been turning loop on and it's looped the whole of the file. What we can do is actually specify a smaller chunk, a smaller loop point. So first thing I'm gonna do is gonna connect in the start point to exactly the same point as the loop point. And then we need to do a little bit more maths here. So let's create an addition object. And I'm gonna connect this through as well. And then we're gonna offset it by, in fact, I can just steal this control here put it in there. So what's going to happen here is it's going to go to a specific slice, let's say 166 milliseconds, and that's going to loop around there. And then 166 is being added on as well. Okay. And so basically then it will loop around one slice. Now the interesting thing here is we can obviously adjust this and tighten it up. So let me turn loop on, hold down a note. And as I now as I adjust that it won't actually update because I need to bang the left inlet. There we go. So now if I hold a note down. So now if I play sixteenth notes. we can get some quite interesting sounds out of it. So rather than having a number here, which is gonna change, what we could do is set up another live dial, have it as, let's say, a percentage. So range zero to 100, unit style percent, Initial enable, have that to 100. Okay, so 0 to 100 comes out of that. And then we just need to scale that down. So I could use a scale object here. 0, 100, and then put it between 0 and 1. And then we can use that to multiply the output of this. Just hold on Alt to copy the object to multiply. Do this. Into the right inlet. And then we'll just create a bang. 
trigger the actual sum and then continue on like that. So reset this 262. So now you can see as I adjust that, it goes from 166 right down to zero. To be honest, we probably don't want it to go down to zero because that won't result in any sound whatsoever. So uh, a kind of quick way around that is just to add on plus two. There we go. So let's just save, uh, if I close that, um, I've got in here a clip which goes up chromatically. Okay, just 16th note. Click back here, I'll need to drop in the audio file again. You have to do this if you kind of switch between um, live and edit the patch. And there we go. now see it going through 16th notes changing the chunk here if I grab hold of this <laughs> and we create these type of effects on the sound design courses here at Point Blank and equally also adjust the tempo here so all we need to do now is just tidy it up a bit so I don't actually need that keyboard or don't need to see the keyboard in the device so let's select the slider the loop on off button the live dial the drop file and then add these to presentation go into presentation mode very simple set of controls and I want to name that as well so this is slice length I'll call it length in short name you can rearrange these And that is essentially all we need. The other thing I'd need to do as well, just uh, right click Patter Inspector or Control click and then switch to Open in Presentation. And that is all ready. Save that. And that is now what my patch looks like. So there we are. We've created a simple sampler which offers some additional functionality when it comes to looping and will sync to the actual timeline.